We're coming up on one of the Korea's one of Korea's biggest holidays, the Lunar New Year, which means that some local films will once again be battling for the big holiday crowds. Our film critic Pierce Conran joins us today to tell us about this year's films and how they might fare at the box office. Good to see you again, Pierce. Good afternoon. So first off, which films will be battling it out for the Lunar New Year this year? Uh, well, normally there's quite a few films at this period, but uh, actually there's a few less than usual this time around. Mm. And so we have two. Those are the, um, the period set kind of a music bio romance called Ceci Bon, which is a French word, which means it's so good. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Showbox's period action comedy sequel called Detective K Secret of the Lost Island, which follows the 2011 original, which was subtitled Secrets of the Virtuous Widow. Um, so Lunar New Year is a very big time for, uh, especially for families to come to the theaters, and normally we do see uh, a number of very big hits. But um, last year they, they had four films, the four major studios each put out a film, but only one of them broke out. So perhaps it's a case of uh, studios being a little wary of uh, of, uh, of returns this time, so we've only got two this time around. Mm -hmm. So before we get to the details of those uh, two films, why do you think then uh, the Lunar New Year holiday is such a big time for studios to release their films? Well, it's considered traditionally one of the four major um, one of the peak theater times uh, of the year. Those other ones, of course, are the, the high summer period when the schools are off for a few weeks, and then there's the Chuseok holiday, mm -hmm. the Thanksgiving holiday, and then the end of year period, just right around, uh, right around uh, the other New Year. Um, but uh, in, in the for what's special about uh, Solnal, um, Lunar New Year, is that families come out. Uh, so everyone, everyone's together, and so studios have this opportunity to program uh, kinds of films that might actually bring out large crowds, uh, mm -hmm. not just certain demographics. So they really kind of go for broke and try and get the whole demographic. Um, and so that's why we've seen a few films, like last year there was uh, Miss Granny, and the year before that there were Miracle in Cell number 7, which was particularly successful. Huge and, hit. Yeah, huge mm -hmm. hit, and people didn't really see that coming, but in retrospect it made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm because it was the only film that could uh, really kind of rally the, the whole family. And, uh, but it's, it's not exclusively family fare that works. There have been some other movies the same year as Miracle in Cell No. 7. We mm -hmm. had the spy action thriller, The Berlin File, but that was just a particularly big year where those two films alone got uh, about uh, 20 million admissions, mm -hmm. and it was certainly not the case like that last year. So we'll see what happens this okay. time. Okay, so let's come back to this year's film. So Ceci Bong, that's one film that I'm really looking forward to. So what can you tell us about that film? Uh, it's indeed, it's a very big release. It's from CJ Entertainment, uh, of course, the biggest studio in Korea. And uh, it's set in the 1960s and takes its name from uh, the Ceci Bon Music Club, which mm -hmm. was a kind of a famous uh, um, folk, uh, folk venue, which kind of served as a birthing ground for a lot of the music that is really considered classic Korean rock at this point. Um, and so we have, um, the, the, there's this group called the Ceci Bon Trio, which comprises two very, very famous musicians, which are, of course, Song Chang Chik and uh, Yun Hyung Joo, who, of course, later would form the folk duo Twin folio. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the third member, who's actually kind of a fictional character, is played by Jong Woo, and he's kind of the lead. And But all three of them, they fall for uh, a girl who kind of serves as their muse, and that is played by the famous actress Han Yoo Joo. Mm -hmm. So, do you think the nostalgia factor would work for this film? I've asked my mom, and she really wants to go watch this film. So it's for the parent generation in our cases, I guess. Uh, yes, uh, it's definitely trying to go for everyone. There's a young star to bring in the young people, but of course the period setting uh, is is there so that we can kind of uh, get the, those older crowds come out. Because uh, so, you know older viewers don't always go to the cinema, but when they do, they go out in a huge numbers. We've seen that recently with Ode to My Father is a good right. example, or perhaps The Attorney not so long ago as well. Um, so we have there's other examples of that, like you know Architecture 101 or Nameless Gangster that's been going on for a while. Um, and the musicians are a real draw here because everyone loves uh, Twin Folio and uh, people you know, remember that and so uh, that's going to be very important. But the problem for me, uh, having seen the film yesterday, is that this, th this music setting is it's kind of a cheat because uh, you kind of think the movie is going to be really about these musicians mm -hmm. but they're just kind of the background. And it's more of a love story. More about the romance. Right, about characters that weren't actually real characters. So. It remains to be seen how word of mouth will go. The curiosity is high, and people will definitely come out and see it early on. We'll see how it kind of uh, it, it, it continues beyond that. Mm -hmm. All right. At least some portion of the fan base for Chong Woo, though he's very popular at the moment, so mm -hmm. we'll see how that fares. But how about Detective K sequel? Do you think um, that will? How does it stack up the original 
the previous version? Um, I mean, I'd say it's, it's kind of more of the same. Uh, it's definitely trying to hit the same buttons as it did before. It's, uh, it brings back the same star as Kim Jong-min as kind of this, uh, this bumbling but very clever detective and then his sidekick mm -hmm. Odal Su, uh, a very popular supporting actor. And the story uh, deals with kind of counterfeit silver that gets slipped into the economy during the Joseon era and a number of kidnapped children and how that kind of all comes together. To, to say any more about the plot is kind of pointless because this is kind of a very much an episodic thrill and it's, uh, it's all about setting up um, a big set pieces and a lot of uh, big gags mm -hmm. and just kind of giving uh, Kim Jong-min and Odal Su an opportunity to kind of uh, uh, jock around together as, they've, as they did well in the last film. Mm -hmm. And on that, uh, on that count, it's very much you know, more of the same. Mm -hmm. So will it be enough to attract the same crowds, at least for the people who have seen it before? Will they come back and watch the sequel? I certainly think most will. I mean, it's been a four-year gap, so that's, uh, it is actually quite similar, but I think the gap is long enough that people would have mostly forgotten what happened in the first one. Mm -hmm. um, but the only thing is, there, it does take a very dark turn towards the end, which is a little out of keeping, and some people might not like that. But I don't think it'll go so far as to kind of really sink the film, and I do think it'll do quite well. At the same time, Odal Su, who's been you know, in many, many films, in fact, recently he became the first actor to have a filmography of amassing over 100 million admissions, which wow. is quite a feat. Mm -hmm. But um, given Oda, uh, Oats My Father being such a big hit, and he was a really significant part of that, right. I wonder if his presence might actually boost the film a little more than usual. Okay, so which film do you prefer um, out of the two films that we talked about today? Well, personally, uh, I was expecting to like Ceci Bon more. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't like the first Detective K that much. I thought it was, it was okay. The second one, I'm not such a huge fan of it. Uh, you know, I, I see that it's, it works and it totally achieves its aims, but it just didn't really work for me. But I was very, very disappointed with Ceci Bon. Mm -hmm. I loved the music from the period and I thought it was, I thought very, felt very cheated that that's not what, what we got. And what we do have is actually a pretty, pretty dull film, in mm. my opinion, and there's this very long coda at the end that goes on forever. But um, uh, They had a good trailer, uh, I guess. Right, and, uh, but it, for me, the, the, the film is not the trailer, uh, mm, sadly, okay. which happens sometimes. But given at the box office, I think I would have said Ceci Bon was going to be primed to be the big hit, but now I'm not so sure. I think both will do well, but ultimately Detective K will probably do a little better than its predecessor and probably win out between the two, but I'm not expecting a huge hit like we had in the last two years. Okay, all right. I was torn between which one I would go watch, but I think I have uh, made up my mind. <laughs> I won't tell which one, though. All right, thank you very much, Pierce, for uh, coming in today and sharing your insights. My pleasure.